Unless you obsess over changelogs, you may have not noticed this new feature inside the beta 2 version of the new 1.7 release of Generate Blocks that gives us the ability to create new custom at rules. While this might not look like a huge change, this actually unlocks some pretty awesome superpowers. And as far as I know, Generate Blocks is one of the first builders to actually incorporate this inside the builder. What we're talking about here is the ability to create container queries. Container queries are similar to media queries where we change layouts based on the device width, but with container queries, we don't worry about the device width, we worry about the width of the containing element. This gives us the ability to take something simple like the CTA and change its layout depending on the size of container it's in. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on how containers work inside Generate Blocks 1.7, and I think once this clicks for you, you're gonna see all kinds of opportunities to start using it. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. So let's imagine we design this really nice call to action section that we wanna reuse consistently across our entire website. One great way to do that is to actually turn this into a synced pattern. So here I'm gonna hit create pattern. I'm gonna call it my CTA and I'm gonna make sure that the synced button is turned on. This way, any changes we make to it will be reflected across the entire website wherever we use the same pattern. So with that, I'll go ahead and hit create. And now we have our synced pattern. Just to show you how that would work, we'll go ahead and go to the top of this page, add a container and an inner container, and we'll search for my CTA, which we find here, and insert it on our page. This is great because we can go across our entire website and reuse this pattern. Of course, before we made it a pattern, we went ahead and used our media query controls to make this mobile responsive. So when we get down here on mobile, it actually stacks to a one column layout with the image on top. Now the first place I know I wanna use this synced pattern is in my blog post template. Here inside that template, I have a pretty simple setup with a hero section, the content on the left-hand side, and I've created this sidebar here where I actually wanna stick in the CTA. So let's go ahead and click the plus button here. We'll search for my CTA and we'll insert it in our page. Unfortunately, as you can see, and maybe you predicted, we have a problem here. When we set up the mobile responsive settings here, when we created our pattern, we're using these controls that you're used to. Now these controls actually use media queries. So you're able to change the layout based on the width of the viewport. But here inside my blog post layout, the width of the viewport is my desktop width. So it doesn't know to actually make this CTA the stacked version because the side-by-side -side version obviously isn't gonna work here. This is something that media queries just can't handle. What we'd have to do in the past is create an entirely different synced pattern, which means these two different versions would no longer be in sync with each other. So if we ever needed to make changes, we'd have to make sure to go back and make those changes to the regular version and the sidebar version. But with the power of container queries, that problem no longer exists. We can make this same pattern actually behave perfectly no matter if it's in a very wide width container or if it's in a small sidebar over here. So let's take a look at how that's done. Now, since I've already saved this as a synced pattern, we're just gonna go in here and click edit original. So we're editing the original copy of our synced pattern. Now, one drawback to doing these container queries here inside the UI is we're gonna have to use our imagination a bit because the way container queries work, similar to media queries, we're gonna be saying, hey, do these changes when you're inside of a container that's smaller than, let's say 768 pixels. Now, what we're actually seeing right now isn't that setup. What we have is a full width container that's much bigger than that. So we're gonna have to use our imagination to remember what changes need to be made once this gets into a small container. Luckily, in this case, it's fairly simple. We wanna make this a one column layout. I wanna tighten up the padding inside this text side, and I wanna make sure that this image container has a minimum height of about 250 pixels. So let's go ahead and open up our list view. We'll click on our CTA wrapper. We'll make sure we're editing that CTA wrapper class, and now we can create our first container query. You'll find the container queries here under the show at rule options. We'll click on that, and then we can add new. Here in the at rule, we're gonna type in the at symbol and then write the word container. After that, we'll open parentheses and we'll do a max width of 768 pixels. Now I picked that because that's where we're actually having this stack once it's on a mobile device, according to our viewport width. And I think that's gonna work just fine here for the container as well. Anytime this is in a container that's smaller than 768 pixels, we wanna go ahead and stack this vertically. Now you can change this to whatever you want, but in this case, I think it's easy enough to just keep those numbers the same. So here with that rule created, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create, and now we can make the changes. 
here under layout, I'm going to change this to a display grid, which we had before, but we're going to change this to one FR. So that way it's just one column here instead of the two column layout. Like I said, under the text here, we'll go into the text wrapper and we'll create our container query for that at container max width 768 pixels. Close our parentheses and hit create. And on this one, I wanted to change the padding. It was at about 40, I believe, and we're gonna bring that down to 32 pixels. Lastly, over here on the image wrapper, I'm gonna click into that and add a new container query at container max width 768 pixels. Hit create. And under the sizing, I'm gonna make sure that the height is 250 pixels. And I also need to go in here into the grid row and tell this to live in the first grid row because we want this image to be at the top of our call to action. So those are all the changes we need once this goes to the stacked version. So let's go ahead and hit update. We'll save that. Let's go ahead and go back into the editor so we can get these container queries working inside of our blog post. We'll hit the back button and we can see there's been no changes here yet. And that's because we need to tell the sidebar that it's actually gonna be the container for this container query. Now it's a bit confusing because Generate Blocks has decided to name one of its blocks container. And what we're actually using here is a container query. Those two things, while they share the same name, are completely different. What we need to actually set up is the sidebar to be the containing block for this CTA with the container query. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but we're gonna do this in a really simple way by just creating a utility class that we can slap on any container on our website to make it the container. So with this sidebar selected, we're just gonna go ahead and add a new class called container and hit create. Now, the only thing we need to do in this class is under layout, go down to container type and change this to inline size. There are a couple other options here, but 99% of the time, what you're gonna need is the inline size, which in our case is the width of this container. Once we go ahead and change that to inline size, this call to action we set up with the container queries is now looking at this sidebar, its parent element with a container type on it as the container, and it's gone ahead and put those container queries into effect. Because the sidebar is less than 768 pixels, it's going ahead and applying all those changes like making this one column, bringing the image to the top, making it 250 pixels tall, and shrinking this padding around the text here. Now, just to prove that these are the same exact elements, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this call to action. We'll grab this first one here and we'll just drop it inside of our main content area. And as you can see, this one has the two column layout and this version has the stacked layout. We have to make sure that we add the container class to our main column here as well if we want these container queries to work inside this setup. But even with that on there, this container is more than 768 pixels wide, so this can still use the two column layout, while this one under 768 pixels gets to use the one column layout. Obviously the huge advantage here is this is the same exact call to action. If I go in here and edit the original and we take off the word big, and we save this, we can see that it's gone ahead and taken out the word big from both of these. I don't have to manage these separately anymore because they're the exact same pattern, just behaving differently based on the size of the container they're in. But let's go ahead and take a look at how this behaves on the front end. We'll go ahead and save this page. We'll go back into our post and we'll view one of our demo posts here. As you can see, we have our two column CTA over here where our main text area is and our sidebar one, which goes to just the single column layout. Let's go ahead and go into our inspector and we'll start with this, the full width and see how this behaves as we get smaller and smaller. As you can see, this one in our main content area has now stacked to a single column layout. That's because our container query is taking effect to say, this column here is now less than 768 pixels, so we need to go to the stacked version. Here in a second, our media query is gonna take over to make this entire blog post just a single column without a sidebar. And when that happens, this original CTA in the main content area has more than 768 pixels to live with again, so now it can go back to its original two column layout. As it gets smaller and smaller, we go back to a scenario where it's under 768 pixels and it's stacked on top of itself again. 
This means that no matter the width of the device or the width of the container they live in, this call to action is always gonna be looking perfect. Now, if this is your first time experiencing container queries, this might've felt a bit overwhelming. There's a huge mind shift that has to happen when you start thinking about container queries and media queries and how both of those things affect your responsive design. Now, I'm sure I'll be using this more and more, so you'll see it come up in my videos in the future, but I've gone ahead and put together a list of videos that I think do a really great job of explaining how container queries work. I think by diving into this a little bit more and now knowing exactly how they work inside of Generate Blocks, you'll be able to take this superpower and start using it in your layout as well. Now, hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.